All right, night before, I'm gonna follow Drew for the next two days of the, the Bassmaster Kayak Series tournament on the Susquehanna River. Uh, got to do a little bit of, you know, following you with yeah. pre-fishing, so I see a little bit of, you know, at least one of the patterns. But right. yep. tell me what's, uh, what the night before is sort of like. Yeah, yeah, so the night before, it's a, it's a little bit, stressful you know for any tournament angler uh but right now we got an amazing airbnb look at this we got the whole setup here we're rigging here's all the guys in the house check out the guys say hey what's up guys all the guys, guys. All the guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it's nice though we got a nice good airbnb so we have light here we got a covered uh basement area it's about to start raining so this is kind of nice so we can relax and get rigged but essentially i'm going to take advantage of the torpedo so i always want to take advantage of the tools that i have and I've got a torpedo, so I'm gonna run and gun and move as fast as I can to the spots that I that I feel where fish are on the pattern I've learned in pre-fishing, which I'm not gonna say so these guys don't hear me because I'm also friends, but also competitors in this tournament. So anyway, we'll learn more about that as the video goes on. And so, so I'm just- So what time are we, uh, are we leaving? When do we- We gotta we launch at seven, lines in at 7.30. When are you and I leaving? And we this? are leaving here probably like I don't know, six something in the morning. We gotta look and see how far it is to, to get to our ramp. But yeah, I'm excited to get get out there and just keep chunking the wine as fast as I can, covering water, uh, which is what I love to do. And uh, yeah, catch some big smallmouth. Cool. Do you want a biscuit? Sure. Yeah, okay. Now we're in. Two eggs. So I'm gonna point out something. Yeah. <clears throat> Drew's here making breakfast. <clears throat> yeah. Everyone else in the house has already left. The people that I've filmed that are routinely at the top of the leaderboard <laughs> Don't jinx are me, dude. not <laughs> in a rush. They're going to get there when they need to get there, yeah. but they're not stressed. They're not in the panic rush that most of the rest of the field is in to launch. Yeah, not to launch and, all that. And this, I mean, <laughs> I, I it was the same thing with Jody. We're at a launch on the New River, and like, <clears throat> their kayak's blocking him from bringing his trailer down. And I'm like, you want me to move those boats for you? He's like, nah, they'll get them. <clears throat> and he launches like 12 minutes after, <clears throat> you know, after when he could start. Because... Oh, yeah. He's not. That would stress me a little bit more. But you're not. You're no, I'm not impressed, I'm, man. Yeah, and I'm always stressed about that's my just fish. A common and, thing that that people that are good at this, that are the best at this, yeah. figure out how to be relaxed enough to focus on what they're doing. That's it. Yeah, I'm definitely prepared in terms of I know where I'm going, I'm a game plan, I know it's more about my, my execution than there's right. anybody else. And, you know, obviously you're a little bit nervous about how many people are gonna show up at your ramp and stuff, but you can't really control that. So right. it doesn't really matter if you get that early. No, it doesn't really mean no one has claim to a spot just because they got to the ramp sooner, so. I mean. But they're just gonna be sitting there in the dark and cold usually, just waiting, so I don't know. But I don't want to cut it close either, so I better get this stuff going. Yeah. And uh, we'll Which, I mean, you're relaxed. Yeah. That's it. That's the common. However, however you develop that, it's the common yeah. characteristic. It helped that I took yesterday off and got prepared. You know what I mean? Rigged up everything. Just got 
so right. rest and totally prepared. So you didn't get on the water yesterday? I, I only did for an hour and a half at the end of the day. And that was just to like scratch the itch. I just couldn't yeah. take it to be here all day staring at this river and not be on it. Right. Well rested. Yeah. Relax. Beautiful sight when nobody else is at your ramp. <laughs> nice. It is going to pour at some point, and uh, if the floppy brim of this hat gets in the way of that, it's the only way that I'm keeping this camera from dying in the rain. Cover that. I moved the string out of the way. But editing notes. You see the brim of my hat? That's what's going on. So this is where we're following along today, and uh, obviously no no numbers yet. We still got 10 minutes, and honestly, sometimes it doesn't even matter because people wait until after the tournament. They got, I think, an hour to upload all their stuff, and that's a strategy some people do. You know they. They don't waste their time on the water uploading, they wait till the end of the day. Which I get, if you catch a nice one, there's another one right around. So you want to get the picture and get back to casting. How many people we got? A lot. Let's see, we ended at uh, 146 people competing. So we got three minutes to go. I'm going to pull up the Omnia fishing app we're gonna just turn on let's see we'll just do precipitation which is radar but you could do radar and wind let's do wind as well layer that in and coming out of the north west <clears throat> It's not really showing the precipitation on us, but it's off to the east of us. But it's going to build it's definitely north of us, and we've had had uh, rain coming down. I know that as, as it launches right now uh, from the creek mouth above, we got some stain for sure. Yeah, I think it's 7.30, man. Get that angled up just a little bit for shallow draft. Shallow operation. Is that a buzz bait or a whopper plopper? A chopo. chopo. Big or anything. Could have 
time. First one was? First one was definitely big. Oh. I'll give you a good tip too. You want a good tip for top water? Keep yeah. an eye on today. Keep an eye on how many times the fish hits on the first couple cranks when I reel it in. Like that first one did, that one just did. They're gonna be in the first quarter of the cast, which tells you how far smallmouth can see and how fast the smallmouth is. And if you don't get bit in that first little bit, I'm not saying you can't get bit. So that's sort of a case for like more short cast. Yeah. I mean, I know that this, now we're out in the middle, it's clear water. Yeah. But. I like, I mean, the only reason I'm making long cast, yeah, is because it's clear. But it is, a, it is low light, I don't really have to make. That mud line came out, what? Yeah, the mud line was 30 clear. yards? Yeah. If that? Yeah. Now it's totally clear out here. Yeah. It's small, but it's like 15. That's how good she's hooked. Remember, I don't use a net. She's hooked good. She's coming out of the boat. This one, it's nice to have, but it really doesn't matter <laughs> in terms of, you know, winning the tournament. You need to get rid of this one. But it's number one, so we're going to put her on the board. 15 and a quarter. Is it 15 and a quarter? Yeah, 15 and a quarter. Right on. Looking for 17 and a half and up, really, to be an FOS, a fish of significance. Just tall, it's kind of go with 16. Oh, he's off. Good. Thank God he let go. Well, look, you can see the, the teeth marks on him. On that musky. He tore up this, this guy pretty bad, but not, he's not even bleeding really, so he's going to be all right. But, so you had that smallmouth on and the musky ate it. Yeah, that was nuts. Wow. seem to be congregated more towards this mud line over here. That, nice fish. That's your limit? Yeah, I think so. Maybe the yeah, I think it is. 15 and a half. So not a bad fish.
might be something man made, but it's not pushing off like a log. You snagged a jackhammer? Yeah, it's like a, on a something man made, I think. Yeah, it's like a rug or something big. Yeah, whenever there's fabric, it's hard, like a tarp or yeah, stuff yeah. like that. It's usually filled with mud and. Tarp. Yep, tarp. Which, funny enough, this is pretty much exactly where that fish hit. Really? It may have been hiding under the tarp or, you know, near it, blending in. Try some mud over here. Mud. It's pretty darn muddy, too. Yeah, so I've worked some uh, grassy islands. They usually have fish on them, but lost a big one. I wanted one big fish out of that spot. That didn't get it, but had the bite, and it's there probably for tomorrow, so that's not a bad thing. But uh, now I'm just gonna keep moving up, and this mud line's probably messed up this bank that I have caught fish on, so I'm gonna kind of fish out in the middle and the shoals, kind of on the mud line, since that big fish hit right where the mud was mixing with the clear. So I'm gonna try to keep it moving and just cover all the stuff I wanna cover, hit the high points, and then maybe move spots today, load back up in the truck, so we will see. Subtle, Jeff, you may be able to zoom in and see like some of these subtle little ripples on the surface. It's just some rock that comes up and I kind of like to hide right behind it. I mean, they may not be out here, but every tournament I want to catch, every day I want to catch one fish I didn't expect. I didn't know what was going to happen, didn't expect it. Whether it was some random fish schooling right in front of me, random cast out in the middle that nobody else is going to make. I want one random fish that usually you need that kind of, I don't want to say luck, but it kind of is luck. On this one? So just talk talk about the the patterns that... Oh, hang on. All right. Just a second on that. I don't know how big it is. I think it's like 16. Getting a seam. It just doesn't have big head shape, but it's got a decent one. I'm gonna go land it by hand and she just spit it. I couldn't have even netted that fish, she just got off. Two good fish, that was probably close to 18. And again, over on the mud line, so we're learning something. That's a very positive mental attitude uh, way to look at what just happened. Yeah, you can't do anything about it. I mean, she had one hook. I mean, it doesn't matter net or no net. Dude, that fish just. And I gave her some slack, not like too much slack, but... Why don't you use a net? Well, a few reasons I don't like a net. I feel like it's a fumble bumble just to get them on the net too, because they're going to the boat, they're digging, you're like fighting to try to find them. It's not like they just come in differently. You know? I mean, like, oh, perfectly, just scoop them all the time. And I lose as many fish doing that, trying to grab the net, fumble with it. And then in terms of just my boat space, I like to like have a little bit more boat space too, especially in the little places I'm going, the backwaters and you know, creeks and places like that, that you don't, you just don't want stuff getting all, you know, all of your boat knocked off, losing stuff. Just not part of your system. It's just not. And I, I just noticed, I can tell when they're hooked good and when they're not, and when they're not, you just have to play them with the reel and just let them do their thing. Just like you would with a net. You can't just force them in with a net either. If they're barely hooked, they're just barely hooked. You got to let them wear out where they're really whipped. And then you just gently grab by the hand or just gently net them. So what I was asking you at the beginning yeah. is the the patterns that you found in pre-fishing that you're really trying to capitalize on now are what? Well, I caught some out in the middle like this and some rock, but most of my good fish are on wood. So shoreline wood or just shoreline any wood, wood mostly, but I'm sure they're on out in wood out in the middle too, but mostly shoreline wood. And that's with your super fast spinnerbait deal spinnerbait yep so we'll see if they're still doing that because they're kind of hiding on wood and under some eelgrass mats but i don't know if that's a sunlight thing or what if it's an all the time thing so we'll see what this weather you know if that affects that bite or not we'll see ahead of this Air temp on the map. And yeah, 
look at that. So it's warm this side, but it's it's kind of sliding up. It's cooler. And look on the back side. Big old cold front sweeping across. That guy's just sitting at the mouth. Is he? This is someone sitting on the mouth of the creek up here. Fall in. Ah, trying to hook it with that treble hook. I don't have eyes on it right now, but it was. It was right here. It was. There it is. You see it? Yeah. Get my hooks in. Now I hit my throttle. Got her. That's the best catch I've had all morning. <laughs> After rod. losing two good ones. Oh man. That's our first good one. That's the first FOS fish of significance for me, guys. Fish of significance. That's I like it. That's probably an 18 something. Maybe not. All right, this is one. I'm counting this as one. I got five, but this is one. So I always move my boat when it's a, usually I'm in the boat, um, but I usually put it right on the bank with the left hand side. Just toss my rods forward a little bit. The left hand side of the kayak. So imagine, I'll do this later. All my torpedoes down, so I can't get right on the bank. But I always go to the left-hand side because the fish face the left. If they flop, they're going this way. So, and of course, the trolley's nice because it's got this recess, you know. So they're not really going to flop usually that high anyway. But if you put your leg here, and that since my board's recessed in my kayak, you know, this fish isn't going anywhere. She's going to go 19, I bet. She pinch the tail. I think you can pinch in Bassmaster, so let's try to get her to, to uh, get 19. I'm gonna take a first of safety, just like this. I would like to get a safety with no hands on it, but I'm, I'm gonna try to get her to touch 19 and have her mouth closed. Take a bunch of photos, I think I'll get it. Yeah, it's on 19, her mouth's closed. I took a ton. I take like 10 when they're big. That's a beauty right there. It's one fish that matters right there. 19. Nice it, going, man. Yeah, let's go. Let's let her go. Last 
No, that barb's in there. It's not going anywhere. Don't rush yourself. She's still tugging on it. I can see that that second one's in for sure. I think it is. Yeah, it's in the top of her body. It's perfect. Just however you gotta do it. Right there. Or that mud on it or whatever. Let's just get with safety and then we'll get a better one. Which is cleaner. 19 probably in a gosh. I gotta clean my board off. Got mud on it. Dang it. It is hard when it rains. It seems like a lot all the last tournaments I've done have been in the rain. It's hard because you can't touch your your iPhone sometimes it doesn't work all right let's just we got some safety let me just clean her off and clean my board off and get like a much better shot so there's no questioning and no discrepancy sorry girl get you back in quick that was cool torpedo cables do Here we go. See how long we can get her to touch now. Last time I wasn't really pinching the tail. My iPhone will work. There we go. It's definitely 19 and a half. All right, now I got a couple safeties and it's touching. Let's see, there's no way she's probably gonna go more than that, no. Because her mouth's gotta stay closed. I just can't see it happening. I'll get one more just to be sure with the identifier turned a little bit. And boom, take a picture of. All right, let's let her go. So, yeah, like the, you guys, the first few cranes, the first quarter of the cast, they hit it. I mean, it looks silly when I'm bringing in the rest of the cast super fast like this, but every single fish today, every one, when smallmouth are aggressive, they're a fast fish, they can swim like 20 miles an hour in a burst. When it lands, they see it, their visual theater, and they dart and they're on it within the first few cranks of your cast, or else they're probably not one there. Now this only applies to clear water, it only applies to warm months, it doesn't apply to muddy water, you need to work this cast longer in muddy water, but um, but yeah, you can see it's proven true today. I'm going to throw this wood over here in the mud, so we still try it. It's not wood. But it just doesn't make sense, you know, to, to fly upstream and leave fish biting, you know. Doesn't make sense. Let's try right here. This is legend. I'm getting the bites. So this keeps up. We'll be alright. By right, the end of the day, we'll have five that are over 17 or 18. Like you always think they're bigger than they are. Funny because with this bait, usually the big ones do not come off as easy because they get two of the hooks in their mouth. You know what I mean? Two sets. Get their body in the mouth. And the small ones, they only get one set.
get a little chaotic when you do that. It's gonna call. It's interesting how you you look at the fish and assess how well yeah. it's hooked and decide whether what your boat yeah. swinging or that, you know, that yeah. 19 and a half, man, you played that more than I've seen anyone play. Because yeah. you looked at it and said, no, he's, he's just knew, not yeah, hooked well. Too many times. If you, if you, you know, you've been hooked with a bar before. Most of the people at one time in their life oh, yeah. stuck with a bar, right? Oh, yeah. Hook. If you see that there's just one single hook in there and barb, you know, it's hard to pull that barb out of your skin. So if you just don't rip hard, which is why you just let that fish just wear itself, play in there and play them on the reel gently, and let them just keep swimming and wear himself out, just tire himself out. As long as you don't rip hard, it's not coming out. I mean, yeah. it's only a 15 and three quarters, but it's a cull, so. All right. You know, let's take, we'll take it. Cool. Oh, Hey, because I said that they're always an inch less than you guess, I promise you. Sometimes more. She's hooked pretty good. I'm starting to see the hooks now. Both of them. Yeah. It's just very rare that you, both sets of treble hooks would just come out, you know what I mean? She's just tall more than long. She's not as she's not as uh, long as I thought because she was so thick. You know what I mean? Just so look how thick these fish are. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'll take a picture. I don't even know what my smallest is. I should keep that in mind. I forgot to do that. Quarter. One more. I think everything's over 15 now, so I'm gonna be able to not waste time. But let's just look how tall it is. It's crazy. Do you vary the speed? Do I? Yeah. Not really. You keep that same speed regardless of conditions or temperature? No, no. Or... I will go as fast as I can go in the, I mean, in the summer, but there's a point where it just can't go any faster. And then it, I can go a little bit slower in the spring, I guess, but I don't like stop, start, and do any weird stuff. I want to keep it as consistent as possible because it, I mean, they're trying to hit it, you know what I mean? You don't want to be, if you're jerking it fast, slow, fast, slow, they might completely miss it, but if you keep it on that same speed, and as it goes across current scenes, it's still moving. I mean, it's it's looking, it's still hard for them to, to track and hit, so why make it even harder, you know? thickest mud yet. I haven't caught a fish in the thickest mud over here. So this is the creek coming in right here. It's muddy. And then it comes in again upstream. I'm still going to keep it on it. You know? I've been on that mud line more than in the clear water. I'm pretty much going to move upstream now until all this, this stuff I've got some good history on. Because I looked at the clock. It's 10.50. I need you know, I need to be out of here if I am going to go to the second spot. I mean, if I have a good bag, it doesn't matter if I'm there for just an hour at the second spot. But if I need to catch fish there, I need like two hours at least. So 12.30, 1 o'clock, the absolute latest. But yeah, so we're going to head up and hit that stuff now. So I just quickly pulled over to the bank, get out of the rain for a minute, just kind of reset my mind and brain. 
and switch up to a, I uh, got a, basically just a three quarter ounce sling blades here with the minnows on the back. Pearl with a chartreuse tail. You know, and I'm actually gonna switch this blade, I'm about to switch it to a wide willow leaf or maybe even a uh, chartreuse blade since we got some murky conditions happening, so. That's the bait. You bent that? I bent that and I should have, before I did that, I should have put a second skirt on. Sometimes I'll do that and make it thicker. With how muddy this water's getting, a second skirt would have helped. What does bending it do again? Bending just lets it get a little deeper, quicker, doesn't rise as easy, so it's better for the river and current. So just keep better it all compact. Burning. Yeah, for burning yep. fast. So. Cool. And now I'm going to slow it back down. I think this rain is supposed to go through uh, early afternoon and then shut off. And then I think our wind picks up. Do you have one go after it? Huh? Feels warm, dude. Just so good compared to the outside. Here. I think it might be 15 ish. I think I gotta take a picture of it though. 16 and a quarter. It's definitely a scoreable. It's not gonna touch a half, so let's just let her go. Drew, talk to me about checking the spinner bait at wood from downstream as opposed to upstream. Yeah, man, it's, it's a lot different, sure. I mean, I don't mind fishing baits upstream, but what I do think is smart is when the, the current's pushed all these logs at an angle that's 45 and you're off the bank, you know? So it's actually just easier to parallel the log where, you know, keep your bait in the strike zone where their ambush point is, right? For a longer period. When you're chucking it the opposite direction, there's one little, little guy that almost came in the boat with us. So this is not really, but the, the angle of the sunlight, how I can see the logs is better right now. So that's positive. The water's super clear, so they tend to just, they see this and they're coming and chasing it one way. So still working. And I've got something else to fish on the way back up to all those islands, so let's just let look at the This thing right here is an old dock or something. So well, I think that guy may have been fishing some of these islands. So You're doing that to turn your boat, yeah. What's that? You're yeah, exactly. I use this using your rod as a paddle. So ideally, you prefer to, to hit them moving upstream, not downstream. Yeah, I just prefer to parallel the structure. So whatever that is, if it's up or down, then you'll add a long enough parallel, which is usually coming in a back end.
last at two and a half hours. Okay. Make sure you're filming all that, Jeff. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> It's a good one. It's moving you towards it. Yeah. Looks really good too. Looks like it. Yeah, it's look good. Oh, he's big. Big. I like it when you get three quarters of your your limit, they're big. You know what I mean? At least you're like over half of them now are good. So that's just two left. We got two. Hold them up, man. I want to see. That's, that's, that's a, big that's one, a stud. Yeah. We got about two hours, two hours and fifteen minutes maybe to catch two more this size, and we're still in the hunt. Nice, man. We lost too many, but it's always another day. We got nineteen. Nice. 19 something, let's see. Oh, he's going, this, man. This thing, yeah, man. This thing is, uh... There we go. He got the clues in his mouth. Yeah, well, it was this, the torpedo cable is kind of blocking. I don't ever want them to say, oh, your torpedo cable, you know? Yeah, it's in the way, so I decided to, 19 and a quarter. Make a run? Yeah, 2 30 up one hour. So just kind of move and get, get to some stuff down there that I fished before. Okay. You made yep. it a good ways up. Yep. Yeah, we did. We're four miles up. Not bad, we had the bites. We had the bites. Yeah. We just, Does that first one this morning that, haunt you? It will, oh yeah. It'll haunt me. I miss a lot of fish. I mean, everyone misses fish in Susquehanna, but I've missed a lot of fish. You know, had the bites to, to win a couple times and could be the same this time. But hey, I got three over 19 and some 16s. Decent bag, so can't complain. Still in good check range, so that's efficient. I, I think you're probably in like the top 15. Yeah, probably. If you're over 90 inches, which I think you're right there. Yeah, I'm right there. The 
big ones, there was two or three in the morning that I definitely would love to have. Yeah. I mean, I missed several. But, but then there's a the part of tomorrow, how many people that are out ahead yeah. of you are going to maintain that. Right. So exactly. I feel After, like today was a solid start. Are you, do you think you're coming back here tomorrow or is it? I think I might come back. Part just, of the day? Real quick. Just to maybe fish up to about here. Okay. You know what I mean? The best, I don't know. I, mean, I might zip up just to see the water clarity on that wood. But I do want to fish my other stuff. And if I can just get like two or three good ones out of here, someone's taking out up there. Or putting in, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. If I can get two, any good ones, two or three good ones out of here, then that'd be, that'd be the goal tomorrow. Okay. And then maybe move spots, but... Well, let's go recharge some batteries and yep. get some food. Get in the hot tub. Get in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's a nice Airbnb that has a hot tub. Yeah, it is. Especially on a cold we'll, we'll post do it again tomorrow. Yeah, cold post front day like today. So. Oh my gosh. It just, it did definitely chill off quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job today, man. Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, I, missing the fish. I don't really mind. I got the bite, so I'm in the right area doing the right stuff. But when you lose fish, that's just part of fishing. So yeah. I overall feel really happy and proud because I didn't think I did doing anything wrong to lose those fish. So happy with the day. I know they're here for tomorrow. I could probably have 95. I feel like I have 95 to 100 if I catch all my fish. So yeah. see what happens. All right, you get what an hour afterwards to upload your yep, your fish, upload. and X. I guess people say sandbagger, but really like the the, uh, <laughs> the it it takes up time to do it while you're out there that you could be casting, right? True, true it does, and I, it was raining most of the day, and one reason I didn't submit because it was raining, and sometimes it's just hard for your iPhone to even work when it's wet, so it's just you're wasting even more time. So yeah. right here, guys, the standings um, are. Right here, you can see currently I'm in 12th, it looks like. Uh, Josh Shrinko, who we're staying with, is in first, so that's awesome. Nice. Russ is up there, Casey, so here I am in 12th currently. Okay. Um, but, you know, the, let me explain one thing. This is funny how, here how I have 90 inches. 90 inches is a good day. I'm not complaining about 90 inches. However, there's 90 inches where you didn't have much going on. You catch a big one at the very last minute, and you're like, maybe it was even your fifth fish, and you're like, oh, thank God. Like, I can't believe I have 90 inches. And then there's other days like today where it's like, I've got 90 inches, but I, I saw, and you guys saw with me and experience, I had 98 inches on the line, potentially, yeah, like I striking. Agree. I had around upper 90s. <laughs> so 90 inches feels like a disappointment, but I'm in 12th place. It's not a disappointment. You, you know. And that's striking distance to win it for yeah. tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could crush it tomorrow, but definitely in, in good check range and top five, top 10, and maybe that pushed me up in the top five in AOI since, uh, doesn't look like a repeat. I needed to win this and for some other people to stumble, but, but I knew Russ is not gonna stumble. Like, he's just not gonna stumble. He's too good, there's too many big fish out here. He's gonna have a consistent enough finish and he just needs a good finish to win AOI. So, really happy for him if he uh, wins it and I'm pulling for him. Yeah, happy for Josh too. That's yeah, a, Josh, I mean, solid. Smally Talk Podcast, you guys go <laughs> check it out, Josh Trinko. We knew he was on some good fish and uh, and he caught three twenties in, in practice, so he's definitely showing it right now, taking the lead into day two. Cool. Well, you'll have to watch the day two. This wraps up your day one. That's right. Let's go get, let's get our twenty. Let's get a twenty, man. Right. Let's get some <laughs> let's get hundred inches. Let's go. Tomorrow. I don't know what to do. I can't get out of my kayak. Where the grass. Come on. God, that thing hit hard, dude. Oh my God. Get in. Thank you, bro. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's a giant. Oh, the jackhammer fell out. It just fell out. Is it on the 